So, I messed up last week. When talking about Microsoft's new cloud PC initiative, I called it Microsoft 365, when in fact it's Windows 365. I did issue a correction, and the listener who reported it even said it was clear what I was talking about. But I figured I'm not alone in the potential confusion, so let's walk through the naming here. Their 365 names are plenty. The first was Office 365, which was announced in October 2010. It was the successor to Microsoft Business Productivity Online Suite, or BPAWS. It was upgraded several times over its history. Office 365 included multiple plans, making this more confusing too. There are consumer plans, small business plans, and enterprise plans. In April 2020, the consumer and small business plans were renamed to Microsoft 365. The idea is to showcase the stuff beyond the Office suite. The brand was introduced three years prior in July 2017. Windows 365 was announced in July 2021, and it's a specific service to put Windows 10 and 11 into the cloud, across platforms, and be subscription-based. It's based on the Azure Virtual Desktop, which is their enterprise product. So you know, all three brands are currently active. Office 365 is in place for some of the plans targeting certain enterprise markets. So as special, why do we care? Besides the fact that I want to get the names right, here's why we care about each. I'm putting on my small and mid-sized business-focused lens. Microsoft 365 is the product line to care about. That's the work layer, the productivity suite where work happens and the layer in which there's a ton of consulting opportunity. It includes tools customers are generally familiar with, and as the suite has expanded, the real business process work became apparent. It's about Teams, SharePoint, Active Directory integration, business intelligence, and the way business is built within the suite. There's a ton of value here in consulting and in training. Windows 365 is a level below that. That's the infrastructure layer. It allows for a business to move to a subscription for both the operating system, and more importantly, that OS lives within Microsoft's environment. The opportunity here is in reducing management overhead and improving security. Unlike Microsoft 365's value, this could be viewed as competitive to some services offered by infrastructure-focused providers, such as some managed services providers. I think the customer's needs will drive some significant adoption here. Savvy providers will recognize that the value in the first, Microsoft 365, is higher value than the Windows 365 potential lost value. Take comfort in the fact that the basic training and help desk engagements will remain. A user who can't print will need white glove assistance for this foreseeable future. In a Windows 365 and Microsoft 365 combined approach, you can reduce the risk that the user will get themselves into security problems and still help them use it and help them print. Skeptical? Windows 365 trial demand overwhelmed Microsoft at launch to the level that they stopped taking new trials. I think providers are missing the equation. While yes, this is more expensive than just building your own hardware, the service includes costs around security setup and management software. But from a customer perspective, they're moving the spend rather than taking it away. Microsoft is taking away a lot of the actual management of devices with this move. You can build a complete Windows environment that runs entirely on top of another environment that you likely don't care about. It could be entirely unmanaged. Or simple, Chromebooks, iPads. Take the complexity away from a user or give them the actual flexibility. For most users, if you simplify down to a browser and office suite and web access... You're done for most, and you don't have any of the annoying overhead of a full modern computer with the PC and OS on top of it. In this configuration, Microsoft Endpoint Manager is your RMM, and it enforces with policy against the operating system as the approach, rather than agent added to the operating system. Put this in the context of my recent comments about RMM. Why add an attack vector when you don't need to anymore? Now, project out. A possible Chromebook competitor. 
dream of a Surface device that runs just remote desktop. Here, you have a fully managed experience even without having to control the endpoint. Even today, this makes every virus-infested home computer now a viable option for small businesses to use. And that example proves a new model. A business can run entirely in Microsoft's cloud in a controlled, managed way. And also not trust any endpoints. That's the zero trust architecture cited, and this is a simple way to accomplish that goal. Does this instantly change the landscape? No, but yes. Sure, your day-to-day -day operation didn't change, but a direction is pretty clear on a way you should be heading if you want to change the game for security. A zero trust architecture is within reach. Thus, I'm redoing my own threat calculus based on this. And that's why we care about both offerings. Thanks for watching this bonus episode of the Business of Tech. If you like what you heard here, hit that like button and hit subscribe. It really helps and I appreciate the time that you do that. Additionally, if you want to have a conversation, write something in the comments. I read them all and dialogue is the point. I don't necessarily claim to be right. I do want to make sure that we've engaged correctly. If you really like this content, you can find it daily on the Business of Tech podcast. Go to businessof.tech, click the big blue subscribe button, and find the podcast on whatever podcatcher you like to listen on. It's available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, or wherever fine podcasts are found. And if you want to help with the content delivery and you want to get access to things early, I've got a Patreon. You can support me directly. Go to patreon.com slash MSP radio and it's give what you want. You set the value of the content and help me make this kind of delivery on an ongoing basis. Thanks for listening and I will talk to you again soon.